Guys, how we doing? Welcome to Tony Katz tonight. Great to be with you. It's been a, a day. A lot of work uh, got done. Of course, filled in for Dana Lash earlier today, if you caught that uh, at WIBC or uh, FM News Talk 97.1 or any of the multitude of stations that she's on. This thing in my eyes drive me crazy, by the way. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that's all about or going on there. I'll move this back a little bit so it's not all directly in your face. We are about to start. I'm responding to somebody uh, on Facebook. In standard Looking forward to weather it. Center. A stray evening shower. Let everybody know on Twitter. Thank you. 15 Thank you. 15 will seconds. be where we start off on Twitter at Tony Katz, up to the low 50 Saturday to get into the chat room. Clouds not nearly as windy out of the northwest around five miles per hour. I'm RTV6 meteorologist Kyle Mounts. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Tony Katz tonight. You are go. Because you can't get enough of me, Indianapolis. I'm in the day part. I'm in the night part. I'm in your dreams. Tony Katz tonight, great to be with all of you. 317-239-9393, toll-free 800-571-9422, online, TonyKatz.com. The chat room looking quite fantastic. Uh, there at TonyKatz.com, click on the radio show link, quite literally says the radio show, and you can be a part of it. The chat room is open, the live stream is there, you can catch the video as well. I, I was discussing this, uh, filling in for Dana, some of you may have missed it, and I cannot get over it, and there's... This, this constant flood of new information coming in, and I don't know where they're getting the new information from. I am not Ashley. Ashley in for Paige uh, tonight, as she is every Friday. I am not conspiratorial on anything. But you were there with us last week when this Malaysian Airlines flight went missing. It's the, the news started breaking about a half an hour before we went to air. It took our entire program last week. We were, we were following flight paths. We were trying to figure out what happened, and we were making the most important differentiation last week, that the plane had not crashed, the plane did not go down, the plane was missing. It had dropped from radar, and we understood and were discussing immediately that that is a serious and dangerous sign. You said to me before we went on, who would have thought one week later we'd still be talking about this because the plane is still not found? I am the single most non-conspiratorial person on planet Earth until this. Planes don't just disappear. Let me give you two stories, two new stories as of today. <clears throat> According to American officials and other familiar with the investigation, Malaysian Airlines Flight 370 experienced significant changes in altitude after it lost contact with ground control and altered its course more than once as if still under the command of a pilot. Radar signals recorded by the Malaysian military appear to show the missing airliner climbing to 45,000 feet above the approved altitude limit for a Boeing 777-200. Soon after, it disappeared from civilian radar and made a sharp turn to the west, according to a preliminary assessment by a person familiar with the data. So that's one story from the New York Times. Allow me to give you another one out of Reuters. Military radar data suggests the Malaysian Airlines jet, jetliner missing for nearly a week was deliberately flown hundreds of miles off course heightening suspicions of foul play among investigators. Analysis of the Malaysia data suggests the plane with 239 people on board diverted from its intended northeast route from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing and flew west instead, using airline flight corridors normally employed for routes to the Middle East and Europe. Two sources said an unidentified aircraft that investigators believed was Flight 370 was following a route between na navigational waypoints when it was last plotted on military radar off the country's northwest coast. I read those two stories to say if there's anything else you would like to throw against the wall to see what sticks, 317-239-9393. Because seriously, 
Your guess is as good as theirs. They changed course. They may have changed course. They uh, Somebody else could have taken over the plane. I, I was filling in for Dana Lash today. And someone said they think that the plane was hijacked and they were on their way to Somalia. Well, you take a look at the, the maps, the way they came back. You know, there was that thought that the, the plane had crashed in the straits there between Malaysia and Indonesia. But no, no, no. It's possible. I don't know if there was enough fuel to make that happen. That's what makes some of these waypoint conversations, these islands, uh, so Im important to discuss. I am the most non-conspiratorial person on the planet. The chat room saying, did you ever see that show Lost? It reminds me of that show. That's exactly what it sounds like. A plane just disappears. No one can find it. No one can see it. No one can know it. The chat room also saying there's talk about maybe being transformed into a bomb. That was exactly our type of conversation last week, and it continues. When there is no sign of the plane, one has to assume that the plane is going to be, is, it, it exists intact and is going to be used at a future date. Now, first things first, 239 people, I don't know where they are. And that's my concern. 239 people, what happened to them? None of them could get out a phone call? Still can't get out a phone call. Calls were made to their cell phones and actually rang. But we don't have any clue as to what happened to them. We don't know where this plane is. And I will not believe a story of, oh, there it is, in, in, in some part of either the, the South China Sea or some part of the, of the Indian Ocean. Oh, that, that, there it is. Okay, at least we... I'm sorry. I, I know what I sound like, Ashley. You, you would think you're listening to George Norrie or Art Bell. I totally get that. I can't help it. I can't begin to explain how bothered I am by the fact that we can't find it. The NSA has quite literally every bit of information on me humanly possible. We have satellites that can pinpoint who is in a car in the middle of the desert. We know when there's a heat bloom. We know when there's a use of energy. We know everything. Can't find a plane. Uh, Richard Healing, a former member of the U.S. National Transportation Safety Board, said today, increasingly, it seems to be headed into the criminal arena. The latest re revelations about the investigation he added, quote, indicate the emphasis is on a determining if a hijacker or crew member diverted the plane. Well, of course we're thinking about that. Uh, all due respect, uh, Ashley uh, got me this quote. We needed an expert for that, Ashley? Really? No, I no, I don't think we did. But, right. Uh, I, I looked it up to support your earlier statement that you were you were discussing how they are looking at these other options, and now they're beginning to look at things like hijacking and, and that. So definitely that is a topic of conversation that's on the table. And for someone from the NTSB to say, yeah, this is absolutely something that we're looking at, you know, su further supports your statements. So I was backing you up here, Tony. Well, I, well no, no, no. I mean, my point was <laughs> not that you weren't backing me up. My point is everyone was thinking this from the beginning. Everyone was thinking that, let me try and at least do, do a better job of the connected dots than, than a former guy at the NTSB. Everybody in today's world starts with, um, oh my goodness, the plane's been hijacked. And then when we find the plane, we say, my goodness, the plane went down. What happened? How did it happen? Where's the black box? That top line thought, the plane's been hijacked, was the top line thought every single day for anybody involved in this investigation who has a pulse and a brain that still sends out any kind of electric activity. Anybody who went to, well, we got to find this plane because it's clearly crashed somewhere. The only possible solution is crashed somewhere. Day five, where's that plane? Day six, where's that plane? Day seven, you think someone stole the plane? The person who is on that wavelength needs to be fired from whatever job might be connected to finding this plane. I think we're a whole new people. We're in a whole new world and we think on a whole new level. When a, 
Is it awful to say that it, it, when a plane goes down, uh, if, if, if somehow the plane were to be found and you could prove that it was there, at least it wasn't hijacked? Is that almost a relief to some people? And do I, do I feel any kind of, of what is wrong with me if that's a relief? The, the lives of these people is the first thing on my mind, first and foremost, and then where is this plane? Because if this plane still exists, then there are other lives in danger. Whose lives? Where? This I don't know the answer to. Seven days. We can't find a plane. We know everything about every banking transaction you've ever had. We can find every single porn site you have looked at, even those you were like, okay, I'm a little curious. All right, this is too much for me. I'm done. Can't find this. And I'm bothered to no end. Keep it here. This is Tony Katz tonight. Divorce of business owners or executives raises special challenges in divorce court. In addition to all the emotional distress you're facing, you have to contend with how to keep... We did have a, a caller who didn't want to make a comment on the air, but he did want to say that uh, he felt that the inability of us, the NSA, whomever, to find this aircraft points that they're spying more on their own people than they are on everyone else. And income tax projections. Clients with assets depend on their divorce lawyer skills in these matters. What I've put in the message box is just a, an article from the Wall Street Journal about an hour ago um, that just discusses how... Uh, first-hand knowledge would be required to disable the communication systems as they were disabled on the airplane. Litigation firm of Say that Cordell one more time. Cordell, the, the, uh, and I can link you to this, but there's some information in an article the Wall Street Journal put out, out an hour ago that touches upon the fact that if the plane's communication systems were disabled manually like they believe they were, right. um, it would have to be done by someone with knowledge of a 777. Yeah, you, 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 you don't do this. Just by clipping the blue wire. Like if you make right? it a great spring, I right. Yeah, yeah. And that, yeah. Right. It's it's not an episode of Get Smart. You got to really know what you're doing. And, and this that is points more fingers mm -hmm. towards something along the line. Yeah. Send me that article. We can continue yeah. that that little okay. bit of line of thought because and, and that's totally true. Friends, this isn't an amateur act. act. They have not in the slightest. And and only one piece of course we got to be thinking about it in that regard. On the Installed in your home. I'm telling you though, I feel labor. I tell you this, everyone. I feel weird Here's about another. talking like this. Like, the only word that I can come up with, the, 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 the clinical term of how I feel, is oogie. Great protection of leaf guard. Guaranteed that that I would even think of going in this direction. Use that ladder I, go to leafguard.com now. Then give them a call for Steve I, I, Spring. I, I, what else do you got? Five four six zero six hundred. Again, the number five four six zero six hundred. If you need reliable, high-quality video production, look no further than PrimeImageMedia.com. PrimeImageMedia.com provides promotional videos, training videos, and conference... Boston Randy, yes, Vince Foster was murdered, but I, it, 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 I, I know that. That's not conspiracy theory. Reliable video company. <laughs> There's the difference for me right there. Dude, this eye. Oh, my God. I'm going to have to wear sunglasses. Ooh. Hey, Tony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I can send this to you in chat, but we did have a... I knew I was stuck in this game. We do have a caller on the line who who wants to contribute that if the plane did go down in the water in the area around Indonesia, that there are a lot of warships that have been sunken in that area that may hinder search efforts, throw off the sonar, that kind of thing. Um, and also, if we're looking towards the Indian Ocean, the Indian Ocean is, the I believe, the third deepest ocean in the world. Yes. I, I whoa. also make it absolutely possible. It extreme. Put them on. I'll, I'll, I'll answer him. I'll save it for the air. Because it was free. Let me know. Okay, he's on hold. Okay. Put uh, just let me know in the super secret chat. This morning, I found out the reason it was so cold. I was sleeping right by the. Uh, when you'd like him to comment, or when no. I potted him up. When uh, his name and stuff. I mean. Oh, duh. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get that to you in just a second. Check out Diary of a Wimpy Kid: The Last Draw by Jeff Kenny. Explore new worlds and check out more cool books at your local library. And visit read.gov. Brought to you by the Library of Congress and the Ad Council. Bodies of all shapes and sizes. Bending. Stretching. Turning. Twisting. Motion. Suspense. Chaos. 
Korish Dance Company comes to the Tarkington at the Center for the Performing Arts for two nights of turbocharged dance. On March 14th and 15th, beautiful bodies, breathtaking movement, artistic athleticism, an evening of repertoire that combines ballet, modern, and jazz in an unforgettable evening of dance. The evening's highlight, Ravel's cool. Bolero. Thank you. You've heard Ravel's most celebrated musical composition. Now you can see the piece come to life as Koresh Dance Company converts music into passion. Live at the Tarkington. 45 seconds until you bump. .org or call 843 Sponsored by St. Vincent Health. Be at the center of it all. Check out what's going on with 93 WIBC. Join our Home and Garden Show live this Saturday at the All-Star Roofing Booth at the Indiana Flower and Patio Show from 9 to 11 at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. Also make plans now for our free town hall on personal and home safety presented by Protect Your Home, your ADT authorized dealer. Tuesday, March 25th at Fountain Square Theater. It features expert panelists and band of neighbors by Angie's List. Grab more info online at WIBC.com. You're listening to Tony Katz tonight. To talk to Tony, call 239-9393. You are go. Taking another look at the map. Wall Street Journal. Expert was needed to disable Malaysia Airlines jet system when we were discussing this uh, during the break. If you were going to uh, end communications between the airline and uh, the, the, the plane and the ground, you'd have to know how to do it. The transponders, the black box, uh, everything. You you would have to know how that's done. This wasn't an episode of Get Smart, everybody. Some you know it wasn't MacGyver with with uh, a, a paper clip and 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 some duct tape. This took people who knew what they were doing. Tony Katz tonight, great to be with all of you. Two three nine ninety three ninety three toll free eight hundred five seven one nine four two two. I do have so much more to get to, but let me just go to the phones. Uh, John, welcome to Tony Katz tonight. What's up, John? Hey, thank you for taking my call. Um, uh, one thing to think about is if, in fact, the plane, you know, did go down the water in this part of the world, if they're trying to use sonar to find an outline of the plane, depending upon how intact it is, got to remember that there were, during World War II, a lot of Japanese warships, American and British warships, were sunk in this area in, in many battles. And it may hamper the search effort, you know, if it did go in the water. I know, you know, someone mentioned the other day uh, that they thought a, uh, I think like, like a tsunami boy or something caught, measured something in the water, I think around uh, Vietnam. And the other thing, I wonder if the United States is using their SOSIS network, if they picked up anything on their uh, SOSIS network that uh, looks for uh, uh, Russian submarines or Chinese submarines, for that matter. You know, if, that, if that's why they're in the Indian Ocean with the USS Kidd uh, looking over there for this plane. Uh, the, an the answer to that question is no, I don't know. But uh, a point taken that we're talking about incredibly deep waters, and if the plane, I mean, it, it's possible. Someone had, had mentioned to me that if the plane had actually nosedived, and had nosedived, and I appreciate the call, and had nosedived from a height, as they're reporting, of 40,000-plus feet, it could have nosedived in less than a minute. It could have possibly gone in without creating much debris, and yes, would be would be difficult to find. I don't say no. I say that is absolutely possible. My question is to probable. This is the part that gets me. And I trust me, I said during the break that my own thought on this, this this whole I'm not conspiratorial on anything uh, about this plane, I feel oogie. It's the only way I – it's it's so – I mean, it's not a word, but it's exactly it that, that I actually think this, that that plane is somewhere, that I don't think it was this drop into the ocean. I don't know why the music's playing, but I don't think it's that in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I will, of course, take your calls on this. I'm, I'm more than happy to. Uh, but a couple of, of good stories for Indiana that I, that I wanted to get to because uh, the, the legislative session is done and a couple of 
bills now uh, making their way to Governor Pence's desk. And some of them, I think, are worth noting, not only for the great state of Indiana, uh, but whether or not they have value in general. Now, we spoke uh, yesterday with, with Chase Downham of uh, AFP uh, Indiana, state director there. Uh, he's cheering, of course, uh, Senate Bill 1, which will lower the corporate income tax over the course of six years to 4.9%. It will give the state the second lowest corporate income tax in the country and will allow counties the option to reduce the business personal property tax for job creators in their community. A lot of counties have said they won't be doing that. I don't know if that's the case uh, when push comes to shove. Also being uh, going to be signed, uh, is uh, raising uh, standards for daycares to get federal money, um, uh, but it's something that needs uh, his, his attention. This is from uh, the Indy Star. That's why Penn said Friday he will sign a bill that demands better supervision of children in more than 1,200 unlicensed but taxpayer-subsidized daycares. He said, I don't think we have any higher obligation in the state than to our little ones, and obviously we've all been impacted by the heartbreaking stories that have emerged in, re in recent months in Indiana, from children wandering away from caregivers into streets and out into the cold to children dying in broken cribs and one that drowned in the baptismal pool at a church daycare. An Indianapolis Star investigation found at least 31 deaths in Indiana daycares since 2009, with 21 occurring in unlicensed or illegal daycares. Licensed daycares already must comply with a host of regulations, but the bill Pence pledged to sign would apply to some of those same rules to unlicensed daycares. Um, my only fear on this, and this is a nationwide fear, is that what is it that we classify as a daycare? If you have a child and you agree to watch your friend's twins, is that a daycare? Can someone regulate that? Now you say to me, Tony, 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 let's not be silly. I can point you here in, in Southern California to moments where um, Bible study groups at people's homes were broken up because they were told they didn't have a permit because they were actually running a, 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 a church group. They had 10 people over from the church to read, the, read a passage in the Bible and talk about it. How is that a problem? I don't understand why that would be an issue. But it's happened. So when I see it there, I, I, I want to share that story. That there's got to be a difference between an unlicensed daycare and somebody watching their friend's kids. Or having a one of those, uh, I, I just heard about this term. I didn't know this was a thing. Drop-off parties. The kids of a certain age. Because when they're like six and seven, the parents go to the party, to the, to the birthday party. Because they keep an eye on their kid. When they're eight, nine and older, it's a drop-off party. So now if you have, and by the way, some people in, in Southern California, they have like five-hour drop-off parties. There's a time for games, and then there's a time for a movie, and then there's this, and then there's cake. If it's five hours at a time and ten kids show up, is that an unlicensed daycare? I, I, it's, a, it's a question about how the law is written. It is one of the things that has to be looked at. Two other laws worthy of attention. Legalizing industrial hemp and a little bit on mass transit. Is that what's best for the state or for the country? Much more ahead. This is Tony Katz tonight. This hour is powered by the Indiana Flower and Patio Show, March 8th through 16th. MD Anderson. Would you like to do your live read after this community health spot, Tony? Sure. I sneezed. Over 19. Oh, okay. I didn't hear it. Oh, no, you didn't. The largest. Um, if you wanted to talk a little bit about hemp, um, hemp would be a great thing for the state of Indiana, um, just as a crop, and it's uh, it's uh, what it does for the soil. Um, so if you wanted to talk about that, we can talk about hemp. We also have a good phone call on the line, and then some quotes from a, an article that ABC News put out after we got on the air. Community. As okay. much community we will that. take the call. This affiliation means who uh, you can give the quote. You can take the, the call, and then we can continue. National leader in cancer care, while remaining right here at home. Cool. Sense. I'm kind of an kind of a dork when it comes to that hemp thing. So yeah. Against all right. Cancer, the message all right. Is clear. Hope. Did you think right. uh, did, did you think I was anti hemp? No, 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 not at all. Just if you wanted to talk about it, I have an interest in it. That's all. Ten seconds until your live read. 
MD Anderson Cancer Network is a program of the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center. Guys, the Timeshare Cancellation Center are the people you need when you want to save money because the timeshare that you thought was a great deal is no deal. It's a bad deal. It's the worst thing you've ever, ever, ever done. And yes, that includes that one time in college. We won't talk about it right now. But you could fix this problem by calling 888-288-8107, the Timeshare Cancellation Center, 888-288-8107. You tell them who you have the timeshare with, you tell them the problem you're having, and their team of lawyers goes to work. They get you out of the timeshare and they save you a whole bunch of money in the process. Give them a call, 888-288-8107 for the Timeshare Cancellation Center, 888-288-8107, 888-288-8107, or check them out online at givebackmytimeshare.com. Hey guys, Garrison here with exciting news. We are headed back to Israel this spring and we want you to come with us. This will make our fourth such trip, and I can tell you those who have been there before agree it's a life-changing experience. We'll cruise the Sea of Galilee, tour ruins that are thousands of years old, walk the way of the cross, and roam the ancient walled city of Jerusalem, indeed, the holy city. Here's the deal. We depart for Tel Aviv May 27, stay in Israel until June 5 when we arrive back in Indy. Cost is a great deal. $43.99 per person, double occupancy. From the Dead Sea to the Golan Heights, you'll enjoy one of the richest experiences in all the world of travel. Having been there three occasions before, I can tell you the accommodations are really wonderful. In addition, we'll be guided by our old friend Alan Marks, one of the finest experts on the religious, historical, and geographical features of Israel and its rich history. Ambassador has been taking travelers all over the world for 60 years and is Indiana's premium travel company, Ambassador, where the journey begins. It's 581-1122 or ambassador.com. At Menards, you get the lowest prices every day, plus sales, too, on all of your home improvement needs. Stop in for great deals now during our bedroom, furniture, and mattress sale. All Serta mattresses are on sale. Plus, receive a free box spring with qualifying purchase. Pick up a queen-size Blue Dusk Eurotop model for just $439. Check out the great deals on Serta mattresses all on sale, plus much more now at Menards. Save big money at Menards. Bobby, it's time to do your homework. Make sure you have my little girl home by 11.30, Robert. Bob, your mom and I have been thinking. It's time for you to get a job. Honey, it's time. We need to get to the hospital. Ever feel like people have been telling you when to do things your whole life? At Mike's Car Wash, we think you should wash your car whenever you want. And with our unlimited washes, you can. Starting at just $29 a month, our unlimited washes let you decide when it's time to wash your car. Heard it might rain tomorrow, but you have a big appointment today? Come on in anyway for clean, fast, friendly service anytime you want. We'll be waiting for you at more than 40 locations with one of our famously friendly smiles. Sign up at any mics for as little as $29 a month. After all, you shouldn't have to wait to protect your car's finish in this weather. Do it whenever Just under a minute until we come back. Car wash today. By the way, good or theory. tomorrow, whatever works best for you. It would be very, very fitting for the government to follow that line right there, yeah. Memories, a loving musical portrait with yep. Anne Hampton Calloway and the Indianapolis Symphony in the Printing Partners Pop Series. From Broadway to Hollywood to Barbara's Platinum Certified Albums. Call 317-639-639. 15 seconds. For tickets, or visit indianapolissymphony.org. This Friday and Saturday at the Hilbert Circle Theater, the Streisand Songbook with the Indianapolis Symphony. It's Bud Light tailgate time in March. March 28th, noon till 9 on Georgia Street. Come hungry and ready to have fun. Details at WIBC.com. You're listening to Tony Katz tonight. To talk to Tony, call 239-9393. Ah. You are go. That's the Nunzio. Love the smithereens. Love the smithereens. So, there, we we were talking about two things. I I have more on these on these uh, bills uh, to go over, but that we had a, another caller on a theory of what had happened. Right, actually, we have somebody else, David on online two to talk about the plane. We we do. We have David on uh, online two who has an excellent theory. If you'd like to hear it, Tony. I, 
Well, jeepers, wouldn't I? What are, what are you doing to me when I like to hear it? I didn't bring it up for my health. <laughs> of course I want to hear it. What what thing is this? David, right. welcome to Tony Katz tonight. What do you got, my friend? Hi, Tony. Okay. I just wanted to say that I believe that this is a botched hijacking. I believe it was tracked as soon as the flight's path became anomalous. And I believe it was determined that because of where it was going and the amount of fuel that the plane would have on board, that it wasn't determined to be a threat. And I think the silence and I think the, the casual way that, that the news has come out, the most important consideration now is simply to, to keep classified our ability to track these planes because it's more important intelligence asset to keep our ability secret than it is to produce this plane. I'm sure they know where it went down. I'm sure the pilot got what we called in the military a face full of water. I'm sure everybody on board was lost. But I think now the consideration is simply to keep our ability to track these things secret. Okay, so let's take your theory and first say that's a very good one. And I, would ex I, I can accept it, and it might actually make me feel better to know that there is an intelligence community out there bright enough to know that because we know something doesn't mean you tell people that you know something. Exactly right. Okay. My problem is, you know what? This is, this is kind of unique. I have lost so much faith in the ability of competency from this government, from this current administration, that I don't know if I can believe that true. I am not saying you're wrong. Your, 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 your thesis there is worthy. But you understand what I, where my concern is, is that I don't trust that, that these people can, could, 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 think of, could think ahead that far and say, okay, let's not say anything. I take a look at all the generals that have been let go, all the commanders that have been let go, all the captains that have been let go. I take a look at what they're doing to, to the military right now in terms of a reduction of, 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 of troop size, what they want to do to the United States Army uh, in, over the course of the next few years. And I am against the reduction of troops while I am in favor of taking a look at assets and at projects and seeing where costs can be reduced in the Pentagon. I am fine with cost reduction. That makes sense, but it never makes sense in terms of people. People are the most necessary uh, tool in a military. People People, people, people. My issue is that I do not trust that that is the reality. I do not trust that the the the, the current government uh, has that that the brain power. That's my problem, and that could just be a cynical thing. And it's that would be rare for me. But this whole thing is rare for me. I'm not a conspiratorial guy, and I'm I'm not cynical ever. I am the most upbeat, ready to go, let's try it, I believe, go forward, move on, carry on person you've ever met. But, you're, but you bring up something that I think is worthwhile, and maybe it's something that I can, I can learn to accept. Maybe, maybe. I appreciate the phone call, my friend, quite a bit. That, Ashley, is an interesting idea. A very, very interesting uh, I, idea about... Uh, what has happened. And it, it would make sense. I could accept it. Just because you know something doesn't mean uh, you, 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 you tell them. Uh, if you've ever watched the show West Wing, did you ever watch that show, Ashley? Uh, I did. I okay. did. Uh, you, you could say what you want about Sorkin's politics. The show was, 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 was brilliantly written. Uh, it, it, it was art. It really and truly was. And there's a scene uh, when they're... Uh, it, it's... it's um, Who's the guy who played, oh, my God, I forgot his name. I want to say Oliver Platt. Was it Oliver Platt who, played, right. who played the lawyer who was investigating whether or not uh, uh, President Bartlett had really committed a fraud and what they knew about the MS, et cetera? And uh, he's interviewing C.J. Craig, who's played by Allison Janney. She was the press secretary on the show. And he said, do you know what time it is? And she looks at her watch and says, it's five something or other. And basically he says, that's not what I asked. I didn't ask you for the time. I asked you if you knew what time it was, and I'd appreciate it when you're on the stand if you didn't answer more than you had to. Do you know the time? That's not what, that's not what time it is. It is a broader question, and the answer is yes. Let them ask you again what the time is, and then you can decide to answer that question. Never answer more than you have to. So I think it's a very, very good point uh, from... Uh, 
from from that last caller from who was it uh, David uh, with his theory. I greatly appreciate that. Let me give you these other two um, these other two laws here uh, that are that are coming through in uh, Indiana and how they apply because you'll see them in other places. A bill to legalize the cultivation of industrial hemp in Indiana is headed to Governor Pence's desk. After it passed the House on Wednesday night and the Senate on Thursday, Democratic Senator Richard Young of Milltown said that over a period of years, Senate Bill 357 would have a large impact by providing Indiana with hundreds or even thousands of jobs, especially in agriculture. He says while the cultivation and production of industrial hemp will create jobs in the agricultural sector, the current cost of importing and transporting hemp from companies from countries like Canada prevents our manufacturers from really prospering while making hemp products. Uh, you're a fan of hemp there, Ashley. I am. Um, as the child of uh, farmers, and uh, a farmer and the grandchild of farmers, this is really exciting for me because I, I kind of look at it like, hey, this is a great way for more, more people to get into agriculture and for farmers to diversify. And actually, hemp has a lot of advantages. I know that people are like, you can you know, use it for different things. It's very versatile as a when it's used in finished products, but it actually has a great um, ecological advantage. It's uh, very good at killing tough weeds in farming. That means you don't have to use a lot of uh, weed killer and pesticides, type things. things like that. Mm -hmm. The the production itself is not traditionally dependent on the use of pesticides and herbicides. And in an era when we're becoming increasingly concerned about pesticides and herbicides getting into you know the water systems and the ground, that's important. Um, now it's kind of interesting. I mean, you, you talk about being the, the the daughter of a farmer. I you know you I thought you were questioning me on this earlier. I am absolutely fine with, with growing hemp. It, oh, yeah, it, no, no. I, I do not have and I have not found a, a suitable argument against it. I, I don't think that you were saying I was, but oh, I think no, maybe 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 you thought that way. Oh, uh, no. I'm, I'm glad to see it. The real question is, will there be farmers in Indiana who grow a certain crop now who will then redevelop the land to grow hemp? Will we see people dump certain crops to replace it with hemp? Will that have a different... Uh, economic pressure on other industries within Indiana or nationwide. What I what I know about hemp is that it's usually planted before your winter cereals. So if it's like a winter wheat, it would go in the ground before a winter wheat. Um, I know that it can be grown several years in a row in the same field, which here we depend a lot on crop rotation, which right. is why you'll see you know corn one year and soybeans the next. Because you can't uh, deplete the the soil the of all the nutrients and everything yeah. else. Um, so. It could be more of an addition than a subtraction. It could be something that people, instead of leaving their fields fallow, they can put something in the soil uh, because it, it is good for the soil. Um, it's got big root systems that loosen the soil. So it's it it for farmers and for people who are interested in those kinds of things, it reads very much as an advantage. And I know that some people would be like, oh, well, you know, it's part of the cannabis family, but actually it's a trace amount of THC. It's like uh, two-tenths of a percent. That's enough for me. Wait, I'm Which sorry. It doesn't uh. actually, uh, you know, <laughs> what I'm reading says that it doesn't actually leave physical or psychological. Well, can effect. I just say that the chat room thinks you know way too much about hemp? They're, they're very, they'd like to know more <laughs> about you. Uh, and according to Prairie, uh, who is one of our, our, our regular listeners in, in South Dakota, of all places, it'll be put into rotation. And I don't, I don't listen. I think that dividing it up or deciding to plant a different crop is completely fine. Uh, and there may be an impact to to other industries, but that's the way it goes. Uh, innovation often has an impact to other industries, and they will find ways. But I, 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 I like this idea. I think hemp has a, a couple of, of of very very good um, uses, and will be. You'd be surprised to the level of which it can work its way into a multiplicity of areas and drive down costs because when you don't have to import, when you can do it right here, and you don't put any undue taxes on it or burdens on it financially, uh, people will gladly use it as, a, as, a, uh, as, a, as their new supplier or as a, a replacement to something that they've been having to deal with with either uh, trade issues or other nations to get. There's no question about it. I like it. I can't wait to see what happens uh, with it in, in Indiana. More when we return. This is Tony Katz tonight.
Are you putting your money into an IRA, pension, or 401k? Okay, apologize to the chat room for me then. <laughs> I feel bad. <laughs> you get in the chat room and you apologize your Because it's not a question not, of if the market Tony crashes Katz. again. It's a question of when. Tonight. It's going get in to there. happen. Let them Did you know there know? is a way Tell you can protect you and grow your wealth safely and now. predictably every single year? The people using Do this it. approach didn't lose a penny when Do the market it. crashed in 2000 or 2008. Was that Zoolander? Do it. In the next crash. In was fact, that, their that money will continue to grow Do safely it. year in and Do year it. out, even when stocks, real estate, and other investments tumble. Now I'm a looking. I'm looking to see if you're in the chat room. Savings program is now okay, um, Tony, TonyCats.com, right? Tony growth. Wait. It's, it's like you don't even listen to the program. No, I listened to what you said. I'm doing a job over here. <laughs> TonyCats.com. Click on the radio show. It outperforms any IRA or 401k. Ta-da! Okay. And now uh, log in. That's bankonyourself.com. Bankonyourself.com. Wait, you're a viewer now. Com. I'm Chris Walls, and I'm a truck driver from Missouri. For 13 hours a night, I sit in my I'm a guest. and I drive. Out of boredom. You're I'll a guest. Yeah, but you, now you need a guest now. Food. I guarantee there's a so, bag of chips open on my dashboard. Dude, there you go. So Indie producer. For about four liters of soda. Look at her. That was all until Andrew Ford. It's Ashley, everybody. four months ago, weighing 341 pounds. And since taking Andrew 400, I have dropped 45 pounds. I'm sleeping. Say hello to Ashley, why don't you? There's no excessive thirst. My knee yeah, I saw that, by the way, away. about uh, the dog. More back Excellent. Issues, and I've noticed that that went away, and I can only contribute that to Andro 400. One thing that Andro 400 said on the radio ad says it attacks belly fat. Well, let me tell you, it did. I've lost six inches. This product really does work. So, guys, if you'd like to experience similar results, then get Andro 400. The safe, natural, and inexpensive way to boost your testosterone. Go to andro400.com. Andro400.com. Hello, this is Joe Cordell of the family law firm Cordell & Cordell. Here are a few more quick divorce tips that we provide our clients. Go over your financial forms. These list your property, debts, income, expenses, as if they're the most important final exam you'll ever take. I understand that this can be tedious work, but a lot rides on your answers. In fact, these financial forms become the battlefields where your most important disputes are fought or settled. Property division, maintenance, child support, attorney fees, even custody is impacted. Fortunately, this is an open book exam. You can even get help from your attorney. But let me warn you, whether too busy or too jaded, attorneys often fail to demand or give these forms the attention their clients I really decide. hate Cordell and Cordell. Why? You. For more information, check out... I don't know. I just It's kind of like they're like, you're right getting a divorce. divorce. Your wife's a mean lady. Cordell and Cordell. She might be. She might. I know, but she might not be. Yeah, but she might be. But, okay, so what would it be like if, you know, lady lawyers made a campaign where they were like, your husband's a dirt bag. I got the text when I was at work. My first call up ever as a member of the National Guard. I don't know. Let's see what that looks like. The real deal. When we got to the armory... They briefed us on the wildfires, how they were getting dangerously close to homes. It was amazing to be a part of this massive operation. Helicopters were going up with huge buckets to drop water on the fires. Some of the guys in the unit were preparing for firefighting with local fire crews. We went out in Humvees to help with the evacuations. At that moment, I got my first taste from just how important the Guard is to my community. See how the Guard can be an important part of your life at NationalGuard.com. Discover what it means to be a citizen soldier to serve locally as well as globally. Look into the benefits including career skills and money for college. Take a moment. Go to NationalGuard.com today. Sponsored by the Indiana National Guard. Aired by the Indiana Broadcasters Association in the station. Jersey Johnny here for Indiana Flight. We take World War II veterans free of charge to Washington, D.C. to see the memorial that they earned seven decades ago. Oh, Over no, 16 no, no, million no, no, men no, no, and women no. served our country during that war. What's yes, up, you okay? I just had a horrible realization that my world is going to come crashing down. In honor of the late That's not good. We'll have an open house uh, fundraiser at their oh, shop oh, on Saturday, oh, March 15th from 2 to 7 p.m. Visit IndieHonorFlight.org for more information. And many thanks to right. B&W Plumbing, Heating, and Air I'm Conditioning. Right. For this I know mess. I'm it's Big Joe for your local independent American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning dealer, BW Plumbing, Heating and Air Conditioning. And even know, though BW is one of the I know largest I'm American screwed. Standard dealers, I know the it. owner's Dave Machine says it's important to them to treat each customer individually. Oh, matter of fact, we take a lot of pride in that to where we are the people that's on the phone talking to a lot of the customers. So when they call and they have, have a have question or just want to learn about something, then we're 20 the seconds, to Tony. To, and uh, people really appreciate that. BW Plumbing, Heating and Air Conditioning, 2433581, your trusted local independent. 
independent American standard dealer. Refresh yourself with an abundance of spring plant life and color inside the Indiana Flower and Patio Show, March 8th through the 16th. State Fairgrounds, IndianaFlowerAndPatioShow.com. To talk to Tony Katz, call 800-571-9422 or 239-9393. This is Tony Katz tonight. I work from 9 to 5. Hey, hell, I pay the price. You're doing good on the music today. You are. You are absolutely doing very, very well on the music today. And can I tell you, I just had a, uh, I almost had a small heart attack. Um, I am going to, of, of all things, a concert in May. And for a moment, I had the, the sinking feeling that it was um, the same day as the Indy 500, to which I am hoping beyond hope that I will be right there with you guys in Indianapolis. Woo. Because I, I want to see this thing happen. I w- never seen it, want to see it happen, and... Best seats in the house, WIBC. Are you kidding? It is the it is the most beautiful spectacle in racing. It is I can't even can't even describe it. It's beautiful. You gotta see it in person to really understand, but it is it is worth the trip out here, Tony, I promise. Well that that's that's my my plan. My plan is to be there that whole week and, and to do the thing. And then my plan is also uh in April, I forget when it is. Uh the NRA convention is in April. Uh, uh, April 25th to 27th in downtown Indianapolis. I will be there for that as well. And there is still a possibility I will be there for the town hall. If you guys don't know about it, uh, 93 WIBC's town hall, personal and home safety, uh, presented by Protect Your Home, your ADT authorized uh, dealer, the one and only Greg Garrison, will be hosting it. Uh, to talk, help, the town hall talks about the growing violence in Indianapolis. It'll focus on ways to make our community safer and ways to protect yourself, your family, and your home. The event takes place at Fountain Square Theater, Tuesday, March 25th, 7 p.m., free to the public, and will feature expert panelists on home safety, guns, and personal safety. And guests can purchase top-of-the-line and state-of-the-art home security items at the event. The panel will also answer questions from listeners. You can submit them on Twitter Hashtag WIBC Town Hall. And, of course, uh, Twitter, you can follow the station at 93WIBC. So very much looking forward uh, to that. And, yes, oh, absolutely, the Indy 500. Absolutely. This is the bill that I am, in, in base form, I get it and I find it valuable. Long term, I don't know if it's something people should vote for. Let me give you what I'm talking about. After a long and winding road, this from the Indy Star, a measure that would clear the way for an expanded mass transit system in central Indiana, won support from both chambers and the Indiana General Assembly during the final hours of the 2014 legislative session. Senate Bill 176, which would allow six counties to have voter referendums on whether to fund mass transit projects primarily through income taxes, now goes to Governor Mike Pence. The bill represents a major victory for transit supporters, Indianapolis Greg, Mayor Greg Ballard among them, who's been trying to pass transit legislation for at least three years. The compromises required to get the measure through the legislator, legislature may complicate the ability of local officials to sell a mass transit plan to the public. Originally written, the bill would require large businesses in central Indiana to contribute 10% of the transit system's operating costs through a new corporate income tax. That provision created a tricky dynamic, according to the Indy Star, with some senators feeling that corporations should have skin in the game because business groups such as the Indiana Chamber of Commerce have pushed for an expanded mass transit system for years to help transit workers and spur economic development. But the business community lobbied to get rid of the corporate tax requirement, fearing it would set a precedent for a new local business tax. Now, I needed to give you that kind of background. If the idea is that there is a city and these counties are growing and businesses are going to be coming in and people need to get to work, well, let the people vote. 
I like the idea that they get a, a, a vote on this. I think that the legislature could have handled it on its own, but if the people get, get a vote, I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased. I'm very happy. I'm never uh, specifically upset when people get a vote. The issue is whether or not Central Indiana should do it. And I know that people will disagree with me on this, and I have, I've already put the word out to a couple of the experts that I know, and I am doing my own studying. I'm going to dig in on this. Here's my basic thesis. This is where I start. Now I'm, about, I'm, I'm going about proving myself right or wrong, and then the thing grows and maneuvers until you get to a place that is, is, is rock solid, or at least as rock solid as you can be, and then you bring it out to the public, and, and you see what comes back and see if anybody can teach you anything. I mean, that's, I don't know how you build a conversation or, or, or an idea. This is how I do it. If the, the, the premise is we need to expand mass transit by raising money, ergo a tax, because we need people getting to work. My immediate gut check response is, why is it incumbent on somebody in Speedway to determine how somebody in Fishers gets to work? Why, how did that become a, a mobilizing effort? Well, Tony, it creates a value to the entire community. I don't know if you can prove that. There are people who will, of course, tell you that mass transit never pays for itself, and then there are other people who will tell you, yeah, but it's, it, it may lose money, but it's a small price to pay because, after all, people need the jobs. I don't disagree that people need jobs. I disagree in the idea that somehow my job is to subsidize their ability to get their job. That's not cruelty. That's not anger. That's just, a, that's just a fact. I think it requires a little more conversation, and I'm going to bring it here uh, on this program. Ashley, thank you uh, for everything. We're only an hour tonight. It, it, uh, we have so much more, but only an hour tonight. We're back on Monday. Very much looking forward to that. Uh, I would tell you to follow Ashley on Twitter, but she's not on Twitter. Heck, she just got in the chat room for the first time ever. It's madness. You can follow me at Tony Katz, T-O-N-Y-K-A-T-Z. And, of course, TonyKatz.com for all the podcasts, all the articles, and everything. Enjoy a fantastic weekend. Get all your news updates at WIBC.com. Monday, everyone. Much love. Take care. It's a huge problem and big concern for companies. It destroys Do companies' one reputation. Second there, you hear it on the news. Sounds good. I'll be here. Guys, thank you so much. I, I Let me tell you, if you want to know where people are with this, go to uh, WIBC.com, and uh, you can read a, an article there from uh, Abdul, who does a show called Abdul at Large. He's on from 6 to 7 every day. And he thinks it's fine. Uh, you know what? Uh, as he said, the mass transit debate is finally about to make its final stop, the hands of voters. Um, uh, and he goes, uh, for those who oppose mass transit expansion because you believe you are paying for a bus you will never use, I would argue that you have paid more for roads that you have never used. And the line that no mass transit system has ever paid for itself is true, just like no road or bridge, absent some tolls, have ever paid for themselves either. I would much rather pay a few extra cents on a dollar so that someone can get to work rather than stay at home and collect welfare and food stamps. I can't. I think that's, that's bad logic. I, that I've paid for more roads that I've never used would lead me to the conversation of, so why am I paying for the roads? Not, well, okay, I guess I can pay for a bus. Um, and uh, it's going, I think this is going to lead to some unique conversations around my station. <laughs> because I'm already universally loved, folks. Um, so that's that. Guys, listen, have an absolutely fantastic weekend. Um, crazy day. Good day. Uh, I should have, uh, I'm hoping to have some some updates and some other cool stuff going on. Uh, next week, I'm in Phoenix for a day. Don't ask, because I won't tell you. But I'm in Phoenix for a day. So we'll be broadcasting live from there, I think, uh, either Tuesday night or Thursday night. I don't remember. I don't know which day yet I'm going. And, uh, and that's the story. I will talk to you guys then. See you on Monday. Take care.